Good morning, Warriors. It's Tuesday, and we are live in the quarantine zone. I'm Coach Josh, and we are going to crush a, another fabulous strength workout in this uh, living room environment. So today, uh, you're going to need to have access to some weights, uh, whether they're heavy or light. If you can um, have any sort of resistance, that will be very beneficial. And then uh, if you want to make your push-ups easier, a couch is a handy thing to have as well. So uh, we're on the theme of everyday heroes, and we're starting off with the story of Gordon Arnett. And he's a 14-year-old uh, kid from Connecticut. And uh, this is a long time ago. This is uh, uh, in, in the early, early 90s, late 80s. But he uh, sees two men leaving the, uh, the downtown area of, of, their, uh, of their town. And they'd been drinking and talking about going for a swim. And um, Gordon Arnett wanted to be a lifeguard. He actually wanted to join a lifeguard program uh, in his town, but, um, but well, more on that later. So he, he, you know, he, he's interested about water safety, and these two guys who have been drinking are talking about going for a swim. So he, he decides to follow them down to the river because uh, it was the, 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 the ocean, which is not very far away. So they go down to the beach, and these two guys jump in. And the water's pretty darn cold, and pretty soon uh, they start to drown. And uh, Gordon is watching this all unfold, and so he's, there's a boat, there's a little raft tied up on the, uh, on the pier. So he grabs a raft, and he paddles over to one of the gentlemen, and then grabs his hand, puts it on the raft, and the other guy has swim, swum a little far out, or has, has moved a little bit further out, he begins to have a seizure. So he's really drowning and has disappeared. So Gordon dives into the water and uh, uh, is able to fish this guy out of the ocean and uh, take him back to the beach through, uh, through a very challenging swim. So he rescues these two older gentlemen who had been drinking and, uh, and saves the day. The funny part about, well, not funny, but ironically, uh, he, you know, when Gordon applied for his, uh, the lifeguard program in his hometown, he was denied. The, uh, the, the lifeguard or the, 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 the head guy said that he wasn't a strong enough swimmer and didn't, didn't have the physical assets that it took to be a lifeguard. So a couple of, a couple of good takeaways from the story. One. Just because somebody tells you no, even if they're in a position of authority, doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be able to make the cut and uh, that you should take that as an answer. And two, just by, again, showing up, having some initiative, and caring about other people, you can make a huge difference. Maybe, maybe even pull somebody out of the ocean like, like Gordon Arnett. So, if you're not inspired now to uh, go out there and make a difference and save some lives, that's okay. I just, uh, we're gonna get you sweaty and inspired in a completely different way. So we're going to warm up for our strength day right now. All right, so we're gonna begin on the ground with a uh, Cossack stretch. So we're gonna work on the feet and the groin. So I'm going to sit on my heel. I'm going to let my toe come underneath my foot. Or I'm just, yeah, toe come underneath, underneath my foot. I'm going to kick out my leg. I'm going to rock back and forth, stretching out that groin and hamstring on my long leg. I'm going to do that. We're going to go 10 reps as I stretch out my hips here, my adductor. I'm going to lift and tap. Once I get to that 10th uh, rep, I'm going to lift and tap my foot, raise and lower it. And we're going to fire up that butt and then switch sides. Yes. It's good to see you early in the morning, Renee. Glad you could join us. No. Chris, 
Oh wait, Chris is gone again. It's all right. He's having internet troubles. It's all right. We're going back and forth ten times, and we're lifting and tapping on the other side. Then we're going to go into a bird dog. So I'm on all fours. I'm here. And I'm going to flatten out my back. So I'm going to try and not over arch, but I'm also going to try and not round it out. I'm going to just flatten out the back. And then I'm going to stomp my heel back behind me. I'm not kicking up into the sky to get high. I'm just driving that heel back, keeping that back flat reaching out. I'm going slow and as I, as I reach out I'm going to exhale and push out through the belly to stabilize that core while I train. We're just going to go five per side, not a big deal. Just warming up those hips and those abs. Good, that toe points to the floor. We're gonna loosen up our neck and shoulders with a T-spine rotation here on the four point. So I'm gonna be here and I'm going to touch my elbow, with my fingertips behind my head, elbow to the elbow, looking underneath my elbow at the ceiling. So I'm rotating. I'm gonna do 10 on the right then 10 on the left. Six, seven. Again, just trying to get that full range of motion. Switching it up. So I'm here on the ground. I'm going to do a three point kneeling stretch. I'm going to stretch at the hip, at the shoulder, and at the ankle. So I'm going to push my whole body forward. And when I do that, I'm going to rotate my arm back. So I'm stretching out the chest, lats, keep the rib cage down, opening up that hip. So I'm going to bob forward about 10 times. on the left and then 10 times on the right. So I'm not trying to force it, just trying to get everything to move together and open up that hip and shoulder. Then go to the other side. It's a nice way to wake up the, wake up the brain and the body. Ugh. So I'm up and we're going to do a nice big lunge and do some touchdowns. And we're not going to go through a whole windmill, but what I will do is get into a long lunge, touch down the inside of my heel. My lead leg is punching forward. My rear leg is punching back. Just feeling that stretch for a second and standing up, coming to the other side. And just feeling that stretch for a second, let that groin and hamstring open up. Oh yeah. Getting these legs ready to do something. Ah. 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 
All right. We're going to go five per side. So just enough to warm up those glutes, hamstrings, groin. Ah. Woo All right. When you're done with those, we're going to join we're going to come together for the lateral crawl. So I'm going to be on all fours and I'm going to take a couple of steps. Knees are going to be up off the ground. I'm going to step with my right foot, left hand, then my right hand, left foot, and that's one direction. And I'll come the other. So we're going to go back and forth five times to the left, five times to the right, just to warm up those legs, abs, Hips should be at the same height as the shoulders. It's going to go back and forth. Yeah. All right. Get those knees close to the ground, Bob. I can see you. OK. So we're going to warm up our uh, our push-ups and our squats, our pistol squats, that is. So when you're, when you're doing your push-ups today, our goal is to build strength and speed. So first, you have to make sure that your push-up is high quality. So what that means is, if you can see me from the side, my feet and knees are together, my glutes are on, as I descend to the floor, I'm opening up that jar with my shoulder. So I'm tightening up the lat on my way down. Like a corkscrew, I'm twisting, t tightening up the lat, and then I'm gonna explode on the way up with all that tension. So I'm dropping down, dropping down. So we're gonna do five fast push-ups, feet and knees together. So trying to increase the speed at which we, we, we do that. If you need to use your couch, you can do the exact same thing from an elevated position like a chair or a couch. You just line up and try to touch your chest to the couch. Glutes are on, shoes are, shoes are squeezed together. So today, your goal for your explosive push-ups should be to get that that uh, power effect, it's not necessarily plyometric, but you want to jump off the ground if you can. So I want it to be either like this, hopping up off the ground, or I want to be going fast. Just very quickly. So whichever you can get away with, that's what I want you to be focused on. It's okay if you're not hopping off the ground. Clapping is a little dangerous. Don't want anybody whacking their face on the floor but just trying to hop off the ground, if you can, if you can muster it. What we're trying to do is increase the rate of force production so that you're, you're becoming stronger as you do this. You're, you're recruiting more muscle, more muscle, more motor units faster. And then the other exercise we're gonna work on is the pistol. It's the pistol squat. That is a one-legged squat. And I'm going to start from the couch. There's people trying to get into the thing. I'm going to sit down, stand up, drop down, stand up. So you can, you can have a, uh, an object that's pretty high, like one of these, like a, like a, a chair. So if you're new to this, you can sit down gracefully, lock out one leg, stand up. But what I want to do is, I want to maximize the tension from my hands, my gut, and my, uh, and my glutes. So as I sit down, I'm squeezing my fists, locking out my leg, and I'm pulling myself down to the object and then standing up. The more tension you create in the hands, the more tension you're going to create in the abs. We're doing sets of five, just like we were doing with the push-up, sets of five. 
or as many as your skill will allow. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to go a little bit deeper today on my pistol squat. We'll see what happens. So I'm gonna Whoa! All right. Awesome. Josh is making progress. So we're going to do five sets of, of push-ups, five sets of pistol squats, back and forth, with a 45 second rest in between every superset. So you're going to do your squats, then your push-ups, then rest. So I'm going to be doing them at that pace, and I want you to just get as many quality reps as you can. Go for it. All right. What's going on here? Bob, what kind of a squat is that? All right, do you have any, anybody have any questions? Anybody lost? All right, let's do some push-ups and some squats. All right, pistols. Or, yes, as best you can, whatever that looks like. Okay. Five explosive push-ups, five pistols. Nice. So when you're descending in the pistol squat, the goal is not to fall. And the goal is not to crash onto your chair. The goal is to lower yourself with intention. So I'm here, squeezing everything, pulling myself to the box, tap, stand up. Pulling myself down, tap, stand up. So I'm trying to stay in control. It's okay, sometimes I do fall. That's all right, that's allowed. But or that's not the goal. Four. Yeah! All right, so make sure you're breathing. You can squeeze your fists and still breathe. I fell on that one, three, four. All right, maximum tension. I don't know if you can feel that tension at home. So, I thought you were stretching on there. 45 seconds of rest, then getting back after it. It's funny how Fatiguing that can be. All right, that was one round for Josh. He's back in it. One, two, three, four, five. Great push-ups, Bob. Looking like an athlete. Looking like a professional. reasons why pistol squats are so much fun is because not only does it take strength, it takes great stability from your core, from your butt, from your glutes, even from the opposing leg. You feel that quad really pinching when you're going down into that pistol squat. That's because it's stabilizing the pelvis from the inactive leg. Well, it's not really, it's not really inactive. 
obviously there's activity there. But uh, it's, a, it's a total body drill, even though you're only using uh, one leg at a time. All right, going back into the third set. There you go. Can't see it, but Bob is, he's getting six, seven, eight, ten inches off the ground. He's really jumping. He's like a, uh, he's like a Cirque du Soleil performer. I fell on that one. Yes. Man, this was such a good idea for a workout. Clapping push-ups, Renee. Whew. Yeah, the rest just flies by. Everything else goes slow. All right, set four, coming home, almost through. Almost wet. So good. If you're uh, on the last set, congratulations. Last set. That's it. After this, we're going to whip out the weights, have some fun. And I'm going to go ahead and knock out my push ups before I delay too long. question. One side is usually harder for me. Today, they both feel equally as crappy. <laughs> All right, those five on my left, five on my right. Got to finish strong. One, two, three, four. Yes, take that, 
pistol squats. I vanquish thee. Okay, so we're gonna do some squats and deadlifts now. And I'm gonna pretend that everybody has light weights like me. If you have heavier weights, you don't need to do as many reps. So Renee, if you've got your 100 pound kettlebell over there, then uh, you're gonna re reduce the, the volume of the training. But a squat and a hinge are opposite or opposing patterns. So we're gonna do them together in the superset. We're gonna do three rounds of 20 squats with weight and 20 deadlifts. So I'm gonna get my weight, I'm gonna squeeze it, I'm gonna pull myself into that goblet position down here, driving the glutes forward, exhaling on the way up. And I'm gonna do this for three sets. So feet are shoulder width apart, driving those hips forward on the way down. Nice and strong, proud chest. Five, six. I'm gonna go for 20 because my weight is light. If you have a set of light weights, Bob, you can go ahead and do 22. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, rib cage down, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Huh. So, we'll go from that to the hinge, which is the deadlift. So I'm gonna be standing over the kettlebell butt back, chest up, driving the hips forward, setting it down. So really focusing on that travel that I'm getting with my butt backwards. Toes gently out. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. So we are gonna rest for about a minute and then hit those patterns again. So we're gonna do three sets of 20, and then we're gonna move on to our next superset. So, get some water, if you haven't already. One of the things about exercises, when you pair them together, when you pair a squat and a hinge together, when you squeeze the glutes, it forces those hip flexors to relax, meaning it's easier to recruit your, your glutes every time you do that, because there's less tension resisting them on the front end. And then when you go to do your squats, they're a little bit more relaxed. You can get deeper with better control. So doing two opposing muscle groups back to back really is, really, as you can say, it's vigorating because you feel that, that heart rate effect but it also helps the quality of the movement. And we're back in action. Going for 20. One, two, three. Rib cage down. Four. Pulling myself into the floor. Trying to get deep as I can with every squat. Feeling that tension in my glutes. Pulling me out. That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, ha! Then I'm going right into the hinge pattern. So I'm deadlifting, but back, driving forward. Two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Ha! So good. Man, I miss barbells. So, you're getting water, you're focusing up for your final set here of your squat deadlift supersets. You're uh, getting your mind right, getting ready to brace your core, getting ready to push outward with that, with those obliques as you inhale and as you exhale. You gotta be breathing through this training. The load's not heavy enough to require you to hold your breath. So breathe through your training, practice keeping that technique while you're breathing. Got to do it. The way I get to practice that is I just never stop talking. So I have to get really good at breathing and doing something. Like right now, back to the squat. One, last set, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, rib cage down, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Dropping the weight, come back into the hinge, butt back, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, ha! All right, that was fun. So, we are moving through to our uh, next superset. So, we're doing our push pull superset. We're going to do push-ups and single arm rows. I know what you're thinking. You're like, didn't we just do push-ups, Josh? I feel like I, I have a Groundhog's Day. It's like I'm just doing push-ups. Well, I would agree with you, but this one, instead of going fast, we're going to go slow. So we're going to increase the time under tension. What, that, what does that look like? That means I'm going to count myself down 1,000, 2,000, up. 1,000, 2,000, up. 1,000, 2,000, up. So it's gonna be a much different feeling than our explosive push-up was. So you can make it, adjust it to the, be the level of difficulty that you need for that. As soon as you're done with that though, you're gonna roll into a single arm row. I've got my weight, it's relatively light. I'm gonna get into a long lunge. I'm gonna brace my elbow on my, on my leg here, right here on my thigh. I've got that straight line with my back. So I'm gonna row here. So one, two. So I'm gonna do six on each side. My thumb is gonna face inside towards my rib cage as I row. So I'm rowing in with that pronated grip. So you can practice that long lunge and that row, make sure it's gonna be a good fit for you. Nice, Renee. Get that back foot even further back, Renee. 
There you go. Nice. Awesome. Okay. So six, six and 12, six and 12, six and 12, three sets. Time to get after it. No big deal. Ah. Fun. All right. Big lunge. So when you're in that lunge, you want to be as long as you can. Now, if you're like me and you have long arms, you're going to hit the ground with your weight. That's okay. Just try to do the best that you can with what you've got. One, two, three, four, five, six. So depending on your weight, this is kind of a hard uh, position for me. So if you want to add reps to that, if you've got a light weight and you want to add uh, reps, do it. Go eight, go 10, even go 12. But don't go so far that you can't feel what all those muscles are doing and maintain good form. So choose your venture. If you've got a heavy weight, stick with the six reps. But if you want to go a little bit more volume on that, you can. Feel free. But keep it to the six push-ups because we're adding time under tension through the eccentric. So you don't want to add a bunch of reps to this. You want to add time under tension and quality. So keep going slow. Second round. One. Two. One thousand. Two thousand. Three. Thousand. Two thousand. Four. One thousand. Two thousand. Five. One thousand. Six. Over to the row. All right. Make sure you're, you're breathing, right? I want you to exhale on the pole. Stay alive. Don't tighten up unnecessarily. Three. Four, five, six. So that's round two. Adding the volume that you need. Good. Resting about 45 seconds so I could be strong on the next round. Going into set three. Love me some challenge. Ha Lusa! Ha Lusa! Last set! set. Alright, we're gonna finish strong. Slow that push up down. so funny. Doesn't, doesn't look like much. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. Okay, now we're going to do some abs. We're going to crush the abs. We're going to use the weights though. So hopefully you've got a light dumbbell in your hand, something you can use. We're going to do oblique dips. A perfect oblique dip 
is weight in one hand. I'm going to lean towards the weight because I'm lengthening the trained side. So I'm training this opposite side. And then I'm going to squeeze all the way over. That's one full rep. All the way back down, all the way over. We're going to do 10 on the left, 10 on the right. So take your time with that. Don't rush it. If you're someone who can't do it without leaning forward or back, if you have a wall, you can get to a wall and do that same thing. But I want you to fully lengthen the opposite side, then contract it. Fully lengthen and contract it. Oh. Six. And then you're gonna match it with the other side. So moving over, length, contract, length, contract, three, four, five, six, seven, nice work, eight, oh, going. And then the hip lift. Once you're done with your oblique dips, so the hip lift, I'm on the ground. Hands are on the floor. I'm rolling up my feet and I'm gonna kick up. Come right back here, kick up. So I'm not on my neck, I'm on my shoulders. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ah, 10. Ha ha. So back and forth between those two, hip lifts, oblique dips. You're not in a hurry. Got plenty of time, plenty of time to tackle the day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, eight, nice long dip. Back to the other side. It's okay if you're going faster than me. It's okay if you're going slower than me. I'm going at a pace I could train with the weight that I have. Three, four, five. We're gonna do three rounds. Six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. So back to the oblique dip, or sorry, the uh, hip lift. Nice. Make sure you don't touch your feet to the ground. We don't want to pike out. We just want to keep the keep, keeping those hips and feet up. Two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. All right, getting my hydration, going back into my oblique dips. Got to finish strong. Oh man. 
man. Six, seven, eight. You know, I don't stretch in either of these directions, so this is kind of fun. Nine. Ah. I'll take any kind of stretching and mobility I can get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, hip lift. Everybody's already rolling. I love it. Keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. When you're finished with your hip lifts, go ahead and start with your ever so juicy homework or dessert, as we've been calling it. 20 squats, 10 knee grabs, 20 swimmers. Got to stay in the groove. So we're gonna keep it going. And One, so I'm doing my body weight squat. Remember, I'm breathing, getting low. Three, four, really working on contracting the glutes. Just like we do when we have weight, this should, be, this should feel easy. Dropping down. I always squat better with a little bit of weight. Just have to focus on these a little bit more. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. So doing the knee grab, coming back down. 20 squats, 10 knee grabs. I'm all the way down. Throwing my hands, grabbing my shin, back and forth. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Here we are, swimmers. The reason why we're doing swimmers is because so much of our rear, our rear, our posterior chain, our rear delts, upper back, we're just not getting them used enough. We're leaning over our technology, getting tech neck. So I'm bringing the hands in, bring them all the way in, elbows into the waist, 20 reps, eyes 12 inches in front of me, just as neutral posture as I can get. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Ha 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 ha. So we got our, we got our blood pumping, we got our muscles going with some uh, squats, with some push pull, with some core training, with some, uh, some stretches, some conditioning. And uh, to bring it back to the beginning, the, the guy who didn't make the cut for the life, the lifeguard job ends up saving two lives, which I don't think people are walking around hoping that someone tries to die in front of them, but a lot of lifeguards haven't saved any lives. So uh, just because you're just because you're told no or don't meet the uh, the uh, standard, the the uh, the template doesn't mean you can't make your own way and and be who you want to be and have a positive impact on other people, like our everyday hero Gordon Arnett. So, continue to eat, sleep, train, 
build muscle, burn fat, and bring forth the warrior within so that you can be an everyday hero. Coach Josh, out. Always on the grind. Have you seen Bob's glorious beard? I, it's pretty impressive. Yeah.